Having a name for it made it a little bit easier, I think. But I would never have told anyone, and I've never really spoke to people about it until, obviously, this interview. I started playing rugby when I was 12 and I used to come with my dad every week while he coached and sit on the sideline and watch my brother play. I got pretty bored and then all of a sudden I was like, Dad, like, can I have a go? Because I reckon I can do this and he was like, yeah, all right. So the next training session, um, he bought me some boots and some rugby kit and I trained with the boys um, until I was 12 and then I had to leave and go to a different club because we didn't actually have a girls team then, which is one of the reasons why we set up the women and girls section here. So we set a team up from scratch nine years ago, I think now. We had no one, we had no kit, no balls, no shirts, no team. And we just built and built and built. And then it put Crew and Antwitch on the map. On the back of that, we've now got four girls teams. We built everything from scratch to get to where we are today. And we've got about 40 players now, which is really, really good rocked up to my first training session and there was Molly waiting for me with a big beaming grin on her face and it's like I'd known her for years um, but I'd only known her for five seconds and I've, I've been here ever since five seasons later so yeah well thanks to Molly. <laughs> what role wasn't she taking on? She was a driving force behind it from the leadership, the drive, the ambition, the constant phone calls, how can we get better, what else can we do, where's the next step, what do we need to do, how do we do that and that's the thing that Molly brings to the pitch. Rugby is my life, like I literally live and breathe it um, and I want to grow the game and make sure that a girl doesn't have to leave their rugby club, they've got the opportunity to play and they can stay. Molly and I have now been really quite good friends for quite a while and I found out about Molly's OCD when I was going through some dark times myself. When she would come off the pitch she was always critiquing herself a little bit too hard or a little bit too heavy. It's when we speak to ourselves and when I speak to Molly and I have spoken to Molly in the past about her game set, you can feel and, and see how passionate she is about them things and that's where I've probably seen it for the first time. My granddad died, which was the first death that I'd ever had in my family, and I started to be really, really anxious. And then my mum noticed that I'd started to um, check things, whether that be like validation with my mum about stuff, or potentially like checking plugs, washing my hands, worried about things. And I wasn't tidy, like everyone says about OCD. If you've got OCD, you must be tidy. Um, no, I wasn't. I, my bedroom was always messy. And she took me to the doctors, um, and the doctor said, oh, I think, I think you've got OCD. And I went to do CBT therapy when I was really young to try and um, cope with the compulsions and the check-in and the thought process. When I was playing rugby at the start, that was a coping mechanism because I could have an outlet and I could go and enjoy myself and I wouldn't think about anything that was going on in my brain. You're keeping fit, you're healthy, you're with your mates, and it quietens down the OCD thoughts in my head, which is a nice release, which is a healthy release. Yeah, she can be overcritical of herself, she can be a perfectionist, she can want things done her way, but I never took that as a fault of Molly, that was just who Molly was, and I never thought anything of it. So the tattoo is uh, representing mental health through the Loose Heads logo and the amount of people that say, oh my god, I love your tattoo, what is it? They're like, it's rugby post, right? And I'm like, yeah, but why have you had rugby post? And then I explain that it's a mental health charity. Just thought it was important to have a nice colourful tattoo, which is why I've gone for rainbow, um, but equally, um, just as a talking point, to say, oh, I like your tattoo, and then we can broach the subject of mental health. There's something about this group of girls, there's something about this club that just, we all bond together as a family, there's no separation between the men's, the women's, the juniors, the girls, the boys, we are one club, we're one squad. It is like a family, a rugby club, and I think the more honest conversations you have with your family and talk about mental health, which I'm really passionate about, I think it becomes an easier conversation. There's a place for everybody on a rugby team, and there's a place for everybody in a rugby community. Everyone's got a role to play, and even when you stop playing, you can coach, you can ref, 
you can be a groundsman, you can, you, know, you can do whatever you want. And I've kept friends for life that I've met through the game. Um, so yeah, it definitely needs more people to play.